Good evening, everyone. No one hear me? Hear me? Okay. Maybe yeah, we'll just wait a few minutes here. Um, let's say at four fifty-eight, so we'll maybe give a chance for folks to log back to log in here. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. It looks like it's five o'clock. looks like we've got some more people here logging in. So uh, maybe we'll wait just another minute or two here just to see if there's any more people logging in. All right, I think we can get started here. Uh, we have quite a few people here, both residents and city staff on. So maybe I'll start with introductions. Uh, my name is Sang Tomvan. I am the city dealer here for the city of Savage. Um, so um, with this, I'll maybe start off with city staff first and we'll move to the contractor and maybe we'll uh, have residents, uh, property owners uh, introduce themselves as well and kind of maybe give a an address where you live, just so we kind of have an idea of, of what street you're on. So with that, Craig, you wanna, wanna go next? I sure can sing. Hello everyone, I'm Craig uh, Sabota with City of Savage. I will be the uh, project inspector for the city um, for this project. So I will be the one that you will see in contact um, on the day-to-day -day operations out there. Thanks, Craig. Uh, Jesse, you want to go next? Hello, everybody. My name is Jesse Carlson, and I assisted in the um, elements with respect to the rear yard drainage improvements um, between you know, 70 Avenue South and O'Connell Road. Um, I think many of you I've spoken to potentially um, if you're in that area. So nice to see you. And then we'll move to the contractor. It looks like we've got a couple representatives from GMH here. Um, Brandon, you want to start off and then? Yep, I'm Brandon Buderak with GMH Asphalt. I'll be the project manager. And my name is Joel Bourne and I'm with GMH Asphalt and I'm the project superintendent. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, maybe I'll start off with my top left. Looks like Laura, um, you want to introduce yourself? 
Uh, yeah, I'm Laura Cloutier and my husband, David, we're on uh, about 14852 Credit View Drive. So we're just wanting to get some information on what's going on. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Greg Walker. Greg, looks like you're on mute still here. Pardon me, uh, saying Greg Walker, 5706 Lone Oak Drive right. uh, on the corner. And I'm here for information also. Okay, well, welcome. Thank you. Okay, Sandra. Hello, I'm at um, 14904 River Oak Court. And I'm here to, um, two purposes. I mean, I'm a realtor in the neighborhood, so I like to kind of keep up with what's going on. And then secondly, I plan the Dufferin Park garage sale every year. Okay. And we have it planned for May 24th, 20th, 20th. And um, so I'm just kind of curious how, which streets are going to be affected on May 20th. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. We'll try to get you that information. Uh, is it Gail? Yes, hello, it's Gail and Steve Noakes, and we're at 14947 River Oak Court. We live two houses down from Sandy, so we're just here to get uh, some information. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Um, we'll go to Paul. This is Paul's iPad. Paul Grazzini and Deb Grazzini, we're at uh, 14669 Yosemite. Just here to get some information. All right. Well, well welcome, Paul and Deb. Um, we'll go to Mike Bush. Uh, I'm Mike Bush. I'm with uh, Superior Minerals. I'm obviously most interested in the phase three mill and overlay on Yosemite, as that goes right by the entrance to our plant. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, Mike. Uh, we'll go to Jason. Hi, everybody. It's Jason Vincent. I live at 14657 Yosemite. I'm Paul's neighbor. Good to see you, Paul. Uh, I'm excited to hear about the plans. All right. Um, is it Jashella and Kevin? I'm sorry if I uh, didn't pronounce that right. Yeah, this is Jashella McGovern, and we live at 5640 River Oak Drive, and I'm just attending to get more information. I think we're in phase one. All right. Great. Welcome. Um, who do we have left here? Kelly, Thomas. Hi, Kelly Thomas. I live at 14960 River Oak Court, and I'm just here to get information. Okay. All right. Welcome. Um, it looks like I've got a Greg Dorfner. Hi, yeah, I'm another River Oak Court homeowner, just uh, looking for information. All right, well, welcome. And I have a phone number as well here on here. I'm not sure there isn't a name to this, 763-232. Um, you're on mute. Uh, okay, well, Maybe some just summary of the project. So welcome and thank you for attending the meeting. This is the 20, I should have said, it's the 2021 Street Improvement Project before we got started. If you're looking for a different meeting, <laughs> you might be in the wrong one. So I uh, should have started off with that. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here a little bit here. Uh, maybe kind of show you the area map of the project area. Um, can everybody see that map there? Yep. Um, so most of this project is kind of along the Dufferin, the Dufferin neighborhood, just east of the O'Connell Park area. Uh, Craverview Drive, we've got River Oak Drive, um, as well as some of the Dufferin Court cul-de-sac, the, the cul-de-sacs of River Oak Court. Um, then heading north a little bit, we got Yosemite, as well as Lone Oak Drive as part of the project. What I'm not showing here as well is Yosemite Avenue, um, just north of Trunk Highway 13. Um, that is also um, as part of the project as well. Um, so um, with that, the contract has been awarded. So we are kind of going towards the construction phase of the project now. 
uh, contract has been awarded GMH. Um, their schedule looks like they plan to start here early May. Uh, actually, May 2nd or 3rd, I believe, was the, was the date. Um, and their schedule has it being completed probably in end of July. Um, uh, again, that is very dependent on weather, uh, some of the work conditions that may occur, um, as well as uh, perhaps some of the, you know, some of the unknowns in the area. We uh, come upon bad soils or, or even water main breaks that are going to impact the roadway. So right now that is the, kind of the preliminary schedule for the project. Um, um, and the project includes, for the most part, within this neighborhood, a full death mill and overlay. So what that means is they're going to rip out the entire pavement section. Um, they're going to leave the class five in place, which is the gravel section of the roadway. They're going to replace certain sections of Kerman gutter. Um, if it's mar not marked already, Craig is going to be going out there and marking up curb uh, that needs to be replaced. So any areas that are cracked, uh, settled, um, you'll see markings there that are going to be, is it pink, Craig? It will be, and I was going to start after this meeting saying. Okay. So, so tomorrow you will see pink um, arrows on the curb and gutter um, starting in the credit view drive and then moving over to the river oak drive um i'm going to stay ahead of the contractors uh i don't know if i'll mark it all up brandon um i don't know how fast you'll remove it but we'll mark up probably everything south of dufferin drive basically is what we'll do this week so if you if you do see areas that need to be uh, removed or you see curb and gutter that may be on borderline. Craig could be persuaded if he's out there and you're out there. So uh, certainly more than welcome to catch him uh, if you'd like to talk to, to some of those points. So um, we'll also be replacing or the, the deepest dig you'll see or the largest impact out there is going to be the, the replacement of the bolts um, on the shutoff valves. So in the street and in front of the uh, hydrants, you'll see these shutoff valves for the water and the water main. And so that's probably the biggest dig. So it's down about seven and a half, eight feet or so. They're going to dig down. They've got to have a hole that's, you know, double that on each side. So maybe 20 foot width, uh, maybe a little bit less. Uh, they're going to replace some bolts in those areas. So the intent is not to disrupt the uh, water service there, but there may be some occasions where um, uh, there might be, they have to depressurize the water main or some sorts, and they may have to, to do some shut off. So, um, we don't know yet for sure. I don't think there's any planned shutoffs that I know of, um, but that may occur. We've had it done um, in years past. I think we've actually had one or two, I think, uh, in previous projects. So um, that's could pretty I ask cool. a, Go ahead, Greg. But yeah, could I ask uh, just a quick question? The uh, tentative project phasing, this, this thing that you, I don't know if you can see it, but, but anyway, it says uh, it's got three different start dates. A red, the green, blue coded start date on, on the map. And uh, I'm just kind of curious, is that the is that still correct? The red part starts on May 3rd? Yep, I'll let uh, Brandon and Craig here kind of touch on that. So you guys want to take that? Okay. okay, I'm just curious. Yep. No, they can tax my area, that's all. Yep. You want to touch that, Brandon, or do you want me to? Uh, that's That's fine. I can. I can talk about that. Um, uh, when we bid on this job, those those dates were on the plan. So that's how I came up with that schedule. So yes, we will be starting each one of those phases on those days. That is the tentative plan right now, weather permitting, of course. Okay. Let me, let me add one thing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon. If we finish phase one ahead of, ahead of before June 7th, we will move into phase two right away. We won't wait till the June 7th start. Okay. So if you guys have events like weddings, graduations, sure. um, what, whatever, you know, whatever it may be, please email them to me. We will put it on a, a list and then we give it to Brandon and then we will do our best to accommodate your your schedules. There still will be some impact. It's not like we're going to be totally gone, but we will have it cleaned up in the best that we can 
um, in a safe condition for everybody to use the road. So, so that means there's not overlapping phases. Phase the red phase will end. What what will end up? What I mean by that is in in the red phase they'll do the gate valve work and um, the utility stuff that we need to, and then right after that, the curb will be removed. And then the other crew will come in and they will replace all the curb. And then, and then right after that will come the milling operation and they will remove the bituminous from the pavement and then add more um, gravel then after the bituminous is removed. And then they'll put the first lift of asphalt on and then the sod comes on behind the curb. So there's kind of a sequence but while that's going on in phase one, we might move into Duffer Court and maybe Lone Oak Drive with the utility work. So it's, you will be able, the only time you will have difficult getting in and out of your house is when the curb is removed and replaced. If, if we end up moving, removing the curb and gutter entirely in your front of your driveway if that makes sense. It kind of helps the project move along very quickly. So I think maybe what Sandy was after is the, is this, um, if phase one starts May 3rd and phase two starts June 7th, is phase one done by June 7th or not? No, there will be some overlapping. Um, according to my schedule, weather permitting, around the June 7th date, uh, we will just be putting down the first lift of blacktop and start the restoration behind the curb and blacktop driveways. So there will be some overlapping, but majority of the nuisance work will be done before we start phase two. Okay, thanks. Yep. With that, Craig, you want to touch on some of the impacts of the project, perhaps some of the work, um, what could be expected in terms of working hours and um, the working hours Monday through Friday are um, 7 to 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturdays, if we go by our city spec, it says 9 to 5, um, but we might start earlier the contractor's got to request that we might start at eight on certain things. Um, it's usually the backup alarms that kind of create the, the calls and the nuisance. Um, and in that standpoint, um, the gate valve work that Singh was talking about is the contractor will dig a, dig a hole through the existing bituminous it, that'll be roughly like 15 by 15. We put the dirt on the street real close to the backhoe and you should be able to get around the pile there. It, it, it's going to be kind of like a gopher hole here and a gopher hole there. So we kind of move around it. it you, you'll probably all wonder what we're doing, but we're just fixing gate valves in there so they dig down and they replace the bolts that are corroding or rusting away on the gate valves if you've seen in town where we've had water main breaks in a lot of locations it's the bolts on the gate valve that are rusting away so we're replacing them and then once those bolts are replaced those gate valves are are like like new still, really, they're epoxy coated, they're in good shape. So we leave them in there unless there's an issue with the valve, then we might have to cut it out, but we're hoping not to do that. Um, and then at, then they backfilled that hole and put gravel on it, and we'll be able to drive through that gravel for a little while. There is some storm sewer work on Credit View Drive um let's see hang on let me that is well 
Well, we'll just basically call it, it's, it goes from Dufferin. There's some drain tile work from Dufferin and Credit View Drive. And then it goes all the way to the low point where the road goes to the south and then curves to the east, which would be basically like house numbers one five, or I'm sorry, one four eight five six. From there, going towards Dufferin, there'll be some uh, new storm sewer going in. So that'll be a little different. Um, we'll work with the contractor uh, the best that we can to try to keep a lane open. It's, it's, it's gonna be a little difficult, especially in the curve where we go from the north curb line to the, to the west curb line in the curves. So it, it'll be a little, that'll be the only time probably it might get a little hairy, but that'll only take a few hours because the storm sewer is only like four or five feet deep. Thanks, Craig, for touching on that. So I just want to touch on a little bit some more too as well. There's going to be some localized closures of the roadway, um, especially when you're digging deep and having piles of dirt on the roadway. So the one thing we, a lot of complaints we get from residents is I couldn't get through or I don't know how to get around. So what I would recommend is if you see somebody working out there, certainly you're welcome to drive up to that site. You know, talk to uh, one of the contractors or even Craig if he's out there and say, hey, what's the best area to, or what's the best route to get out of here? or What's the best way to take without, you know, impacts to the construction? So um, we certainly are welcome. And those guys are more than welcome to help out in the field there as well. So the nice thing about this area as well is there's multiple accesses and entrances into a neighborhood. Um, so there isn't, we don't have a whole lot of dead end streets besides maybe Dufferin Court. Um, that would have just the one entrance in and out uh, because of the cul-de-sac uh, nature of it. So um, I think it should go okay, but you know, feel free when you do see workers out there to you know, pull up and ask them what is the best route to get out of here. I, I think that's sometimes missed. And I wanna reiterate that point that you know, they are out there to help um, in terms of guiding people around the work site. So, okay. Um, Brand, anything to add to that? You guys aren't going to be grouchy out there, are you, when you're working out there for 12-hour days? Uh, no, only if it's uh, 100 degrees out. Uh, they're, they're still nice, but they might be stinky. Um, they do like cookies and water, so I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. No, well, we're always out there if you have a question. My guys are very nice yeah. guys, so. If you have any questions, obviously ask me. I should be out there quite a bit when the processes are going on. Yep, there'll be a white Ford F-150 that says GMH asphalt on it. So if you have any questions, you can ask Joel. I just have one more request. This is Sandra again. Um, um, last time when our water was shut off, we were given basically five minutes notice with a knock on the door. And if you happen to be working at home, you might know your whole house is gonna be out of water. Um, if you could give us more warning, I'd prefer to take some preventative measures in our house because it blew out our whole water softener last time. So I'd rather that not happen again. So if we can get as much notice as possible. I'm sorry about that, Sandra. Um, didn't know your water softener got blown out. Um, we usually, if we do need to schedule something out, it, it is usually 24 hours or even 48 hours advance notice. I, if I knew more of the circumstance and what, what happened, I could probably give you an answer and why it happened when the water was shut off in five minutes. I because I've seen most of the Dufferin Park, you know, the, the, the repairs that we've done in the last few years out there. So um, if you want, you know. Yeah, it, and it would just be nice to have like a letter put in the door. So if we can't answer, we yep. get that notification, but it was literally somebody knocking on doors and if you weren't home, you missed it. And right. so. That, that is a good thing, Sandra, for everybody that's online check your front doors. There will be flyers um, that usually come from, from me that I put in the doors. If we need to do a, a water main shut off, it'll give you a, a time and a date uh, that it'll be on and off. Um, and then if we end up removing the curb and gutter in front of your driveway, there'll be another flyer explaining 
that you can park on the street due to the curb replacement and if the you know the police have been very good and savage for not ticketing um if we you know because of the job sites and if you do get something a ticket if you know because of the construction i will work with you to um you know talk to the police and see what we can do to remove that issue we shouldn't have issues they've been very good to deal with is there any impact on uh, mail delivery um greg we're going to do our best to 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 have the post carriers the mail people deliver to your mailboxes if there becomes an issue with it I know Brandon's got a subcontractor um, on board that we can temporarily move a mailbox to a different location. Um, it depends on some of the mail carriers. Some have been really good to deal with and don't want to deal with temporary mailboxes. And then the next one was just very difficult to deal with. Um, so we're just going to at this point, say the mailboxes are going to stay where they're at and do see what happens. Okay. Yeah, Greg, it's been a hit or miss on that one. You know, some postmaster will do their best that they can to deliver as much mail as they can, even if there's work being done. Um, but what we've also ran into where they they see a, a dump trucks in there and they're gone. They're away from the neighborhood. So um, we can't say there won't be impacts, but uh, I know the contractor would do their best to minimize those impacts as best as we can. Um, and you'll certainly get your value pack one way or the other, um, you know, through the mail. So um, maybe since we're on that topic, we might as well talk about the, the garbage as well, uh, garbage service. Um, and so the, the contractor is responsible to provide access for the garbage trucks. If they can't provide access, what they'll do is they'll mark your um, garbage cans um with your address on it and relocate them to an area where the garbage trucks can get to those so um, um they can coordinate that more in the field i know craig has done a, a pretty good job of that um and so uh, you will get um if for instance the the garbage is missed uh the contractor is responsible for hauling your garbage away uh, somehow or other um so anything else to add to that craig or brandon Who touches on that just you know, we're not here to make life difficult for you. We're, this would be a very, it sounds very difficult project, but it's going to go very quick. Uh, I've had some residents in the beginning say, hey, this is going to be hard. And, and then at the end is consider it a little adventure every night to get home. Don't worry your fret, you will get home. Um, you just might have to drive around a pile. We do our best to sweep um, as we go. I usually have the contractor sweep every Friday for the weekend, or if it gets worse during the week, we'll, we'll, we'll schedule something during the week. But do expect a, some dust uh, and some inconvenience getting in and out. Well, we are uh, just a quick question. While we're talking about utilities and a little bit about those that are at home, uh, do you notify most of or any of the local utilities companies uh, that a disturbance may happen and they may have to react? I think about those folks that are working from home right now. Uh, and if there's a possible impact on their internet, if something gets hit, it's rare, but I've seen it happen in other projects. Um, do you notify people or or is the expectation that the homeowner should work with their provider to let them know that something could happen so they can react? We, we had a pre-con yesterday with the utility company. So they all are aware of the project. Um, some were on the Zoom call, some didn't, but they know that it's coming. We sent them plans and specs. And then on top of that, before um, GMH's subcontractor comes in to do their utility work. They have to call in for locates. So the utility companies will be out there marking their stuff. So you'll see 
um, paint, different colored paint on lawns, the roads and different colored flags. Please don't remove them until we put the new sod in place. I know that's kind of an inconvenience to mow around them, but it only helps the contractors get their work done faster. Yeah, and Jason, that's a good point. Uh, so we have coordinated with all the small utilities uh, throughout the project uh, design as well as construction here. Um, and so we set out plans and specs to them. Any impacts to their lines, um, they should have notified us and made the appropriate arrangements to relocate. Um, there wasn't any. And this nature of the work that we do really doesn't impact um, those lines because they are underground. Um, they are kind of out of the way. So um, the one thing to note though, is we may, you know, the contractor may accidentally strike lines as well. Um, it's happened in the past um, and you know, I think from a, a responsible response standpoint, they have been pretty responsive when something gets struck. Now, I know everybody's working from home, uh, you know, students, you know, distance learning, everything else has been difficult. I know last year's project was really difficult um, because I think we, um, because the lines were marked either incorrectly or kind of in the wrong spot, uh, we must, I think it was hit maybe two, three times. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, from a contractor standpoint, they don't want to do that, obviously, because they'll get the bill for it. But, um, uh, but we do our best, and we we can't guarantee it won't be struck. Um, but they have been pretty responsive in terms of getting out there and fixing it once it's it's uh it's broken uh, or been been hit. So, um, but yeah, we will. Um, if something does go off, make sure you do notify us as well, so we can get a uh, hold of the appropriate uh, personnel or company so they can get out there as soon as they can. Okay. Any quick questions before we move on to some of the storm sewer work uh, in the backyards? With that, maybe I'll call on Jesse to go through some of the work. Um, I know we are, I don't know if those that are backing up uh, along uh, Yosemite or Meadowwood Drive there, we are looking for some drive entry still. Um, so what that does is allows us to go beyond the the, the, the right away or the easements in the backyard. So we can at least match in the work a little bit better um, and grade out your yards a little bit better as well. So we do need that right of entry to do that work. If we don't, then we have to, we are pretty much confined within that easement area. Um, and we may not necessarily make it look as nice out there um, as part of the restoration work. So um, with that, Jesse, I'll let you take it from here. I have one question. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure you could hear me. This oh, is yes, Yvonne. This is Yvonne Hansen, and I live on Dufferin or uh, River Oak cul-de-sac. Uh, we're supposed to mark our irrigation sprinkler heads just mainly al across along the road. Correct. Okay. And how soon do you want those marked? Um. You're in phase one, if, if you, I, I might be wrong, Brandon here, do you guys want some kind of flags or do you want some kind of uh, just lath or do you want it painted? But Yvonne, I would say as soon as you turn your sprinkler system, I shouldn't say that, as soon as you possibly can, because we will be starting construction, um, in that neighborhood the first week of May. Okay. And just to guys, let you guys know, we, we pay for uh, um, irrigation lines that are, you know, unfortunately hit by the contractor. Some are located, some aren't located, but dog fences, we do not pay for those repairs. That will be, even if they're marked, they're not supposed to be within the city right away. So um, the sooner you mark them and the, the irrigation heads, less chance that uh, one of the contractors will hit it. Okay, and it's only the ones mainly along the curb. Correct. Okay. Yes. Unless, unless you are um, in this backyard area we're saying is, 
and then that'll be a different situation. But if you're basically, you know, along the front of your house is really where the majority gets us in trouble. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Greg, you touched on that reimbursement, right? I think we just touched on, on that. On the irrigation repairs, yes. Yes. That we will pay for them only. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Jesse? All right, can you hear what I, or see what I'm showing on my second screen here? It's uh, sheet 23, the plan set. I see it, yes. Okay, thank you. So yeah, for those of you that are in kind of this area, I think I've got uh, both Jason and just looking through who's attending here, Jason on Yosemite and, <clears throat> oh, uh, it was a Paul Grazzini. So this kind of gives you a, a general sense of the project. So I'll just um, give a bigger zoomed out uh, version of this. But anyway, uh, you can see in, in this aerial background here, I've got these different properties highlighted. And um, those are properties where I've actually received right of entry forms for the project. Um, but what we're doing in this area is in the, uh, I wanna add it, just give me one second here. Um, this isn't going to work the way I want it to. Never mind. Okay. I'm going to turn the plan back on. So in these backyards, we're basically installing storm sewer. And uh, this is uh, Yosemite Avenue here. And uh, these backyards, we've just received complaints over the years about um, some drainage issues. And um, so we're going into these backyards here and installing storm sewer in the, in the backyards. Um, so when we do that, Obviously, there'll be some disruption with um, anybody who has fences, trees. We do have some trees being removed. Um, and uh, what we do as a part of the project is, is basically we go in there, we do the removals, um, we'll do the storm sewer work. We will um, you know, do any restoration or grading work after that, and then follow up with the restoration and sodding work. Um, as well, and then and, and then install the fences at the very end. So um, if you're in this area, uh, this is generally what the product is. Many people have submitted their, what we call as the right of entry forms, just kind of giving us permission to go in and do the work in the area. Um, in the gray here, you can see that's, that's generally the easement area and project limits. Um, but the right of entry just gives us some flexibility that if we go a little bit beyond that easement, um, you know, there's flexibility to to maybe if there's a little bit of extra grading we need to do to make it work better and flow better, um, that you're on board with that uh, those potential disturbances and so forth. So, um, I think Jason, you're up up closer to one four six five seven, right? Is what I have written down here. Yeah. So, Jason, you think you and I spoke briefly? I can you can see that I've got a drain tile that's being stubbed out to your property. So, if you have a sump pump discharge. Uh, you'd be able to tie into that in the future um, to help with some of those drainage issues there. And um, Paul, I believe you're his neighbor. So, and, and we're actually not going as far as that. Uh, just going back to this image. So, uh, Paul, you're out 14669, I believe. And, um, you know, we're, we'll be kind of, we're kind of touching on both sides of your properties. Because then I also am installing storm sewer um, to the south from um, 14685, uh, 14697 there, and then there's stor existing storm sewer uh, further downstream. I'll go to that plan set real quick. Um, yeah, so you can kind of better see that. Um, so here's, here's you, Paul, right here at 14669. And, and so we're installing, installing storm sewer two about right here. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of regrading through this area to get things to drain better. Um, and hopefully just this, this whole area here um, uh, just stays wet and, and doesn't really dry out after rainfall events um, or ever it seems like. So we're, we're installing some additional storm sewer all throughout here, doing a little bit of regrading in that area as well um, to help facilitate some of that drainage. So um, 
um, yeah, I guess if you're on my right of entry list and you're in the meeting right now, um, <laughs> please reach out to me and, and, and um, submit that right of entry to the city. I do have uh, a good chunk of them submitted, as you can see on this kind of this aerial overview here. So I'm just waiting for a few over here, um, a few here, and then uh, a few in this region. So we're doing pretty good, but I've just got a few more to get. In terms yeah, of, I don't think I received one. So yeah, I, I think if for Paul or Jason, since we're not actually really touching your project or your property, I actually didn't send send one to you. Okay. Um, just as I don't, you know, I don't think we need one because well, um, we'll be within the uh, easement as well, and and we're just kind of going right up to your property, so you guys should be good. Hopefully, this helps dry out some of those those areas. Um, for those folks in that area. That's the overall goal and objective of the project. You know, in terms of, you know, the big trick is, you know, um, I don't believe there's any other, anybody else on the call, but for those folks that are removing fences and they have dogs, is just making sure we're aware of those. So if you are on the call and, and have a dog in the area that will be doing any work, um, make sure you let us know that so we can kind of coordinate with you on how to best go about um, managing that whether it's you know temporary fencing or whatever else uh, we want to do to kind of protect um, both the contractor and and obviously uh, your pet. So, all right, <clears throat> thank you, you Jesse, uh, and thank you to those that sent in the right of entry. So, really, really appreciate that. Um, Brandon, could you maybe touch on when you plan to do the work in this area as part of the project? Trying to still. Yeah, so this is Joel, uh, GMH superintendent, and we're going to be in that area, you know, in the middle of June is what our, our schedule shows. The pipe contractor was going to start around the 9th or the 10th uh, with that pipe project, and there's also some pipe in the street on that, uh, and, and again, the water valves over there, too. So uh, we're looking right about the middle, the 10th, 9th or 10th of June. So Weather permitting. Weather permitting. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, wait till it's a little bit drier back there, right? So, okay, thank you guys. Um, <clears throat> with that, um, is there any more questions within this neighborhood area? Otherwise, I'm going to move over to Yosemite, just north of 13 a little bit to talk about that area. Saying, do we want to talk about this sod real quick? Just Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so the contractor will put the sod in and he'll water it once thoroughly. And then after that, we need help from all the residents to keep it green, uh, especially at this time of the year. Um, so if that's gonna be an issue, we need to know sooner. And then that might possibly delay the sod placement. And we might have to do something temporary. I'm hoping not to do that, that we're just hoping to just seed it or um, sod it. And then everybody can get back to normalness in their backyards. And that's specific to the backyard project area, right, Craig? Yeah, it, what we're, where we're here, yes. Just, but if it's in the front of your yards, that the contractor has to water for 30 days. So that's different with it being in the front. Um, and then, and then what Jess, when Jesse talked about where you could tie your sump pump, sump pumps lines in from your houses to our new storm sewer. Um, there'll be a little yard, like a nine inch by nine inch plastic box that you guys can uh, put your pipes into. We do, and that's a good point, Craig, is we also have areas um, along the, the, the project where we're installing those yard drains, where we know we have sump pump discharge issues so Craig and I went out and kind of identified those last fall. So we do have a number of areas in the plans. So the best thing to do is probably just send Craig an email um, or call him and just let him know that you do have a sump pump issue. I think we tried to identify most of them. So we yeah. should hopefully be addressing many of them. There's a couple that if we didn't catch them and, and they're in a weird spot, we might have to think differently about them. But we do try to eliminate some of those nuisance uh, sump pump discharge uh, type issues because I'm typically the one that gets the calls and I, I try to document that and then uh, address those accordingly with our projects. So um, yeah, just shoot Craig a, a, an email or a phone call so we, we, we are aware of those. 
or or even if you have a neighbor's sump pump running across your you know in the curb and gutter let me know we'll take a look and i'm not bashful at stopping at the door and at their house and knocking and talking to them because now's the time to fix it while the, the pavement's off the road and once it's back on there ain't much we can do go ahead saying all right any more questions um regarding this area or the storm should we work With that, I'll talk a little bit about the, the kind of the third phase of the project here, which is Yosemite, just north of Trunk Highway 13. I know Mike is uh, on the call here. Um, this one should go fairly quickly. It is just a typical mill and overlay. Uh, most of the work is gonna be focused more north of the railroad tracks here. So we did get a permit from the railroad company um, and we're still working on the MnDOT permit uh, in terms of uh, uh, the relaying work here um, as well. So um, for this project, I think we're gonna patch, just do some patchwork maybe south of the railroad track, um, get rid of some of those potholes. And if there's a larger MnDOT project, city project, um, that's gonna take place in 2022, uh, which is the Dakota Truck Highway 13 interchange uh, improvement project. So that is supposed to, bid openings for that is supposed to be in February. and. Um, the intent is to start on that project um, in spring of 2022, uh, be a two year project for the most part. So um, Mike, I don't know if you've been aware of that. I think there's been some business meetings as well regarding that project. So if you need more information, certainly let me know. Um, so there will no, be- No, I've been on those meetings. Okay. Yeah, I'm aware. Okay, I think I've seen you. So um, yeah, but that, that project is moving forward thus far, but for the most part, you know, we'll try to do the areas that aren't impacted by that project with this project, um, trying to get the pavement um, corrected kind of north of the railroad tracks. So um, we did write in there some of the spec that, you know, they're they should be doing the work here during the low, low uh, usage time, uh, whatever that may be. We're going to have to coordinate that with the businesses out there um, in terms of getting that roadway paved because there's a lot of truck traffic on that roadway. Right. Yeah. I guess what I'm, I guess my biggest question was, do we know on the schedule how the length of the project or what we're anticipating? Brandon, what is the schedule? I don't think it was. Uh, the total project from traffic control signs going up to restoration and final wear course is three weeks, weather permitting, okay. 15, 15 yeah. calendar days, or I'm sorry, 15 working days, not including Saturday. Saturday is my buffer. Okay. And then um, are we, I mean, I'm assuming that when we're doing patchwork on certain areas, we're probably gonna have like one lane open with flaggers or something like that. Is that kind of how it's anticipated? Yeah, we'll, we'll always have a lane open, yes. Okay, all right, yeah, I'm just, we have roofing customers that run 24 hours, seven days a week. So the trucks need to keep running into our plant. I understand they're gonna be slowed down during this project. We just need to make sure that the, the trucks have access or if our access is gonna be restricted for a period of time, we just need as much notice as you can give us so we can alert them to build up their inventory in the meantime. So um, they, you do so, work seven days a week? Yeah, we're 24 hours a day, seven days a week with, and basically our, we, we supply three large roofing shingle plants in the Twin Cities. And so they're taking, they're taking material 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So okay. if, we're our, if access to our plant is going to be restricted, I just need to give them enough notice so that their tanks are full basically to survive any kind of um, restriction. So... Uh -huh. I, I mean, mean, we can work, we can work that out when you guys yeah. get your schedule more in line, but um, yeah, I just I, want to make I, you aware of that. I think you or representative of your company and Craig and Joel should meet on that because, I mean, when we are paving it, ideally, I don't want trucks driving on the brand new asphalt right after we lay it down, but, and I don't right. think the city wants that either on their brand new road there either, but yeah, we should try to coordinate something. I. Because in the in the plans and specs here, it said try to do it on weekends or nights or something, but it doesn't sound like there is a good time. So no, that's I mean the, most of the ones in the areas 
so the traffic obviously slows down on weekends and nights, but I mean, our, our roofing plants are still running on weekends and nights. So. Okay. It sounds like if you tell them to stock up before the weekend, you could probably coordinate a weekend or two that would help. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if we have notice, it might, I mean, that, that, that's the question. It's going to be, I'm going to need to know basically how long the closure is going to need to be. And then I'm going to need to coordinate with the roofing plants and say, okay, can you guys get through X period of time if we load trucks in advance and stuff like that? Um, so, I mean, we've done, you know, when they did the railroad work um, out there off Highway 13, we've had to alert our roofers in advance, you know. Um, but the other issue is, too, we've got, because we're a 24-hour a day, seven day a week, we've also got employees that are going to and from work on that stretch, you know. So they, um, you know, when their shift ends, are we going to keep them trapped there? <laughs> we just have to now figure the, out a game plan. The cars are a little like, bit easier on the new pavement than the, the semis. Um, mm -hmm. Really, with a car, after we get the initial breakdown, in, in that you're good with a regular car as long as they're not stopping and turning and spinning their tires. Um, so I wouldn't worry so much about the cars, Mike. It's the semi that get us in trouble. Right. And I'm not exactly, I mean, we're going to have to talk to the roofing plants and figure out how much storage they have to figure out if they can survive a full weekend or a 24 hour shutdown or whatever. I, I guess that's what I, that's kind of what I want to talk to somebody about to figure out, okay, if we were down, how long would we be down for? What would that look like? Cause then I got to work it out with the, the roofing customers to try to see what we can accomplish. It, it would be under a, a 10 hour day to pave all that. But the only thing is we got to keep in mind too, if we do plan a weekend or a night or something and we have weather and it yeah. rains. Yeah. yeah, no, I understand. I, I, I understand so you guys, many times. I, it, yeah. You guys can't give me that much notice. I understand it. And if plans change, they change, but yeah. I just want to try to do, do the best we can. Yeah. No, we'll try to coordinate everything. I totally understand it. I think for an access standpoint, we had written in the contract that helicopter use was incidental to the project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> McNamara is going to see that part, Brandon. No, nope. but I think it'd be a good idea to kind of meet on site to coordinate. You know, maybe later in the project here, once we get yep. closer to get plan that work, I think, and we'll get Mike involved here as well as some of the other businesses as well. Well, and the other thing, Mike, is is if you see something an opening that because i know you go 24 7 but if you see an opening that works to the advantage of paving sooner please let us know right um, well and that's what i was wondering because we'll have certain like for instance right now we have one of our roofing customers down so i guess that's that's the other reason that i was thinking about it is okay if we get another gap should we alert you guys that hey like our largest customer is going down for this week. So now would be a good time to come in and do it. You know, I don't have their schedules that far in advance right, right now, but, um, but that could possibly be something where if I know who to contact, I could let you know. Brandon, how, how, maybe this is a conversation we should have, um, not with everybody, but maybe we could, you know, maybe move it around or something. I don't know what your schedule is, but uh, think about that. Maybe we can do that concrete around the lift station sooner than than what your days have on the schedule. So then if we do have an opening come sooner, maybe we can squeeze it in. I'm open to that too, but then we got the widening of the road. Uh, right, right. Yeah, you know, there, there's more than just mill and overlay there, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess, if Mike has something in the next month that he knows that we can jump on and at least prep and get it ready. So if if we do have to jump on it, we can. I mean, that that, that yeah, can I don't, be a possibility. I can't guarantee anything, but it could be a possibility. Right, and I and I don't know of any gaps in the next month right now, to be honest with you. So I'm just, you know. <laughs> Yeah, this is all hypothetical right now, you know? Right. Okay, well, we'll work to coordinate a little bit more. And I think the, the most important part is probably the pavement portion of it and more than anything, so. 
Um, mm -hmm. With that, um, I think that's all the information we kind of have for this this uh, project. I don't know if there's any additional questions. Uh, we did send out brochure with that letter. Um, so we do, there is contacts in there. So keep that somewhere um, in a pile maybe. And if you need to give us a call, certainly feel free to do that. I'm available, Craig will be available. Um, uh, we also have emergency contacts for the, the contractor as well. Um, so um, anything comes up, um, certainly feel free to let us know. Um, and then, you know, if there's any special, like kind of Craig talked about earlier, special events. I know that Dufferin um, uh, garage sale or is coming up yard sale. Um, certainly let Craig know as well. So and share that with Brandon and we can try to coordinate those, those items. What area is that in? That would be all of phase one, Brandon. No, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Large yeah. <laughs> all right. Sorry. All right. Well, maybe we'll get good deals. Yeah. Maybe. I think I've got one more question. Go ahead. Okay. The uh, in the uh, contract information flyer that you sent out, it, there's a there's a Zoom link or a, or at least a link for future updates. And I, I gave that a try tonight, and I end up at Home Depot. What? Yeah. Depot. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I, I'm not kidding. I did it twice. Really? Maybe they I'm have a pretty good, deal. pretty good typer. We're on a high budget, so we're just direct everybody to get their own supplies <laughs> for this project. No, uh, if you go to the city of savage.com, um, okay. under it should be under, um, uh, let's see here. There is a project website. Um, so if you go to government under engineering, okay. um, even the front page might also have a, a pop of the project updates. Sure, so very good. on the left hand side, there'll be a construction projects. Um, if you click on that, it'll take you to the, the project website. And okay. we'll try to update on a weekly basis what is to come in terms of what the work is. Um, sure. And I think Craig will be coordinating that with uh, Brandon or and, and GMH here, and then uh, Sue will be putting up on our website. So um, right. yeah, that will give you at least a general idea of what is to come for the week. Very good. Thank you. I think this was the intent is to have you get to this website right here. Correct. That is sure. it. Yeah, I see it. Government. Got it. Yep. Then engineering. So. So thank you for checking on that, actually. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> you can get that picture off that website. <laughs> it's a good picture, saying. Come on. Um, any other questions, uh, comments? Well, we really appreciate everybody attending tonight. Um, certainly, it's not going to be a, there's going to be some dust and and mud out there. So don't think, you know, we say it's going to be a quick and uh, nice project, but at the same time, you may have experienced some dust and, uh, right. and mud on the construction site. That's inevitable, but, and noise. Uh, but we do ask for your patience and understanding as we go through this. And hopefully the end product is going to be better than what's out there today. So um, with that, any questions and comments? Otherwise, that's, that's it. That's all we had. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye.